Welcome to the Common Man Football Show. My name is James Coburn, and today's episode we're doing another listener request uh, from at xxroll49xx on Twitter. Chip Jelly uh, says analytics battle on YouTube between Jordan Hicks and Michael Kendricks, and yeah, I think we can do. A analytics battle between the two of those uh, players I think it, it is sort of an interesting sort of uh, differences of players in terms of the Philadelphia Eagles uh, you know you have one guy Michael Kendricks who is kind of on a downslope of his career and I'll kind of show why uh, when we get to him uh, and then of course we have a guy in Jordan Hicks who uh, is coming off uh, by far his best season um, as a linebacker in the NFL. Um, so it's kind of an interesting sort of debate to do. Now, for those that aren't very familiar uh, with analytics battles or analytics data, uh, the main sort of statistic that we're going to be talking about is solo tackle market share production or defensive market share in general. And defensive market share is simply where you take an individual defensive statistic and you divide it by the team total statistic. So in this case, if you have a, a linebacker that has 50 solo tackles and a team that has 500 solo tackles, and that linebacker had uh, about 10% uh, market share production. But what you do with that number is you take that number, you compare it to every single other linebacker in terms of what their performance was in that particular metric, and then you rank them, you make percentile scores, and then boom, you have a way to see where the high end is, you know, what is above average when it comes to that data point, and also where did the majority of the high quality outcomes end up when it comes to that data point. Uh, so that is a big uh, aspect of this that we're going to be looking at is in terms of solo tackle market share for both of these guys coming out of college. Then we're going to look at athleticism data. Athleticism data is simply uh, the explosive lower body strength score uh, versus uh, speed score versus uh, flexibility score. Explosive lower body strength score is the vertical and broad jump measured against mass density. Uh, the speed score is the 40 yard dash measured against mass density. And then the uh, flexibility score is the short shell slash recon measured against mass density. And all those numbers as well are essentially uh, created or done by comparing uh, what their peers did so we're strictly comparing their athleticism scores to other linebackers since 1999 and with all that stuff out of the way let's get to the matchup so uh, we'll start with uh, Michael Kendricks and then we'll get to Jordan Hicks and then we'll ultimately come to some sort of decision on who wins you know in terms of uh, Jordan Hicks versus uh, Michael Kendricks so uh, let's begin Starting out with uh, Michael Kendricks, when it comes to his solo tackle market share in college, he had a 91.63 uh, solo tackle market share score. Uh, based on my data since the 1980, well not 89, but 1996 NFL draft class, 100% of multiple All-Pro linebackers uh, had at least a 90 or higher score in terms of solo tackle market share, and Michael Kendricks hits at least above the 90 percentile score where the majority of all pro players ended up now this doesn't necessarily mean that he's guaranteed to become a multiple all pro player it's just that this is the production range where most of the all pro players ended up because uh, i get that a lot like oh well he didn't become an all pro player so that means that this doesn't matter but it's it's not so much that as just getting into a good range of possibilities you know if all the multiple all pro players end up in one particular range of production then if you're going to say a guy is an all-pro player, then he should end up in that range of production as well, in terms of potential and stuff like that. Then, of course, we get to his athleticism data. Uh, based on his athleticism, uh, he was a great athlete. Uh, he had a 98.92 explosive uh, lower body strength score, a 99.53 speed score, and a 99.69 flexibility score. This was his testing coming out of college. Uh, and based on all my data... Uh, back to the 1999 NFL draft class, he pretty much hit every single linebacker threshold for, in terms of athleticism uh, from explosiveness at the all-pro position to speed to flexibility at all those positions. So he graded out really well as a prospect coming out of UCLA when he did 
Um, he was someone who, based on his athleticism and his production uh, coming out, had all the sort of potential to become a multiple All-Pro player. But when you actually look at his NFL production, he's been kind of inconsistent, uh, you know, overall. Uh, he had a very solid rookie year, um, as you can see. Uh, and just so you're familiar with these terms, MSPER is solo tackle market share, uh, MSSPER is sack market share, MSIPER is interception market share, and MSPDPER is pass deflection market share. And of course, total impact is all those numbers combined into one and compared to all the linebackers since 2005 specifically. Uh, but when you look at his actual NFL production, um, he had one really standout year in 2013. Uh, he pretty much was a top five impact linebacker in 2013. Uh, but for whatever reason, from 2014 to 2016, he's just progressively gotten less uh, productive. Um, and I, I can't really point to any one reason why this is happening. Uh, I don't know if 100% of it's injuries. I mean, I tried to look into, um, you know, his injury history and stuff like that. And I wasn't really able to uncover anything specific. I do know that a lot of 2016 was missed due to a, a whole host of different, like the injury report on Michael Kendricks in 2016 was just a ton of va various ailments from hamstring injuries to any other type of injury you know uh, so um, I'm not quite sure if it's injuries that are kind of holding him back uh, or if he just isn't good I mean that this is the only thing I can really say is that his production just um, you know he had a really big breakout year at 23 years old and then his production just kind of took a dip uh, from that point on and it's really kind of tough to get to pinpoint exactly why that is other than the injury sort of stuff he's had um, and this is a very similar situation to a couple other types of linebackers uh, Lofa Tatupu uh, is someone who had um, a very you know like he had a very big breakout year in 20, 2005 to 2007 uh, and then ultimately had kind of a down year and then had an even more down year in 2009 and that was because he had a, a I believe it was a uh, uh, a torn pectoral uh, muscle in 2009 and ultimately that kind of uh, led to his downfall because after 2010 um, that was it in terms of his career he was never really given another shot to um, get significant playing time after that and then another guy who you might be familiar with as well is D'Amico Ryan. D'Amico Ryan was another guy who, similar sort of situation, had big impact as a young player, um, started to wane down in 2008, 2009, and then also specifically in 2010 he had a uh, torn Achilles uh, and then his, his, kind of, his career kind of went up and down after that, had a, a resurgence uh, in 2012 to 2013, but didn't really get back to the same type of playing. I'm not trying to compare his situation to these players specifically. Uh, it's just that these are players who are starters who had a dip in production at around the same age that Michael Kendricks had a dip in production. Um, Michael Kendricks, again, has not had anything specific like a torn ACL or anything else like that, at least from what I was able to find um, publicly. Um, there wasn't anything like that. He just had a lot of injuries uh, in uh, in uh, 2016. So it's just tough to really pinpoint why his production has took such a dip. I, c I can't really put my finger on it. Maybe it's injuries, maybe it's not. But that has really hurt him so far in terms of projection because while it is great that he was able to have a really good 2013 season, you know, a breakout year at 23 years old is really good. He just hasn't been able to follow that up with consistently good production in, 20, in, in uh, 2014 to 2015. Of course, 20, 2016 was kind of all over the place. So um, for whatever reason, he's just not producing it like the way he should be producing, you know, in terms of a all-pro level pursuit linebacker. Uh, so it's just something to think about when we actually get to the ultimate decision of who wins. Uh, but I just think it, it is a bit of concern that he's – his production has just took this steep dip. You never want to see that in linebackers. You know, you never really want to see them have this sort of dip in their production when they are uh, 
uh, 26 years old. It's never a good thing. Never a good sign, I guess, is the best way to put it. Then we get to Jordan Hicks. Uh, Jordan Hicks, based on his production coming out of college, he had a 77.90 solo tackle mark share score, uh, based on my data as well. He didn't quite hit the all-pro threshold in terms of the solo tackle mark share, but he did hit the Pro Bowl threshold of, nine, of 77 or higher. Uh, so he pretty much has Pro Bowl potential based on his production coming out of college. Based on his athleticism, he has a 90.19 explosive lower body strength score, 64.65 speed score, and a 94.26 uh, flexibility score. Um, based on my data, he pretty much hits all the sort of all-pro thresholds when it comes to his explosiveness and flexibility, but he does not hit the all-pro threshold when it comes to speed for his size. But he does hit the Pro Bowl threshold when it comes to speed for his size. Uh, so essentially, Jordan Hicks coming out of college has Pro Bowl potential. I mean, that is essentially uh, what this means, is that he pretty much has a good host of athleticism uh, in terms of explosiveness and flexibility. Uh, he has at least the bare minimum requirements for a Pro Bowl linebacker based on the speed score, and that coupled with his production as a Pro Bowler coming out of Texas uh, is enough to say that he has uh, you know, Pro Bowl potential, at least high quality NFL linebacker potential. Uh, and then when you get to his NFL production, he actually has not been that bad. In 2015, um, had a 77.11 total impact year, which for a rookie is pretty decent. Uh, and then in 2016, he had a 95.51 total impact year, uh, which is essentially uh, like top 5 to 10 uh, linebacker impact in 2016. So uh, Jordan Hicks has, has become a, a very, very impactful linebacker for them. Uh, his biggest areas of impact has been interception mark share and pass flexion mark share. So obviously he's been very impactful in terms of uh, uh, in terms against the pass, uh, especially in terms of affecting plays against the pass has, has been really good. So he's a great linebacker in his own right, you know, compared to Michael Kendricks. And uh, it, it is kind of an interesting sort of uh, decision. Now, the only sort of injury sort of things with him he doesn't have anything like really specific specific with him. Uh, he had Achilles injury at Texas in 2013. Uh, I don't believe it was a torn Achilles because it, it wasn't reported to be a, a torn Achilles according to most of the uh, sources related to that. It, it just said he had a Achilles injury and then that ended his season uh, in 2013. He also had a hand injury recently as well uh, and that, that was actually Barely, like really recently like probably a week ago or more he had actually had a hand injury so um, I'm not sure how that will affect this season um, I'm pretty sure he might be able to pretty sure his hand will be healed enough uh, to be able to play this season um, you know if he keeps it in a cast or just in a brace I think that that should be because it doesn't take that long to, to heal hand stuff as long as you're not aggra aggravating it so but his injury history is just something to also consider. Uh, Michael Kendricks hasn't had a blatantly, oh my gosh, like he, he's had a lot of, you know, he's had a lot of muscle sort of soreness issues and stuff like that, you know, hamstring sort of stuff. But he hasn't had anything like specific like an ACL tear or an Achilles tear or, or like something that would require extensive rehab. He hasn't really had anything like that. And Jordan Hicks hasn't really had anything like that 100%, at least based on the stuff that I was able to find on, on the internet, which if there is other things, you know, let me know in the comment section below. But I, I don't think either of them had a type of injury that required extensive rehab you know, from that particular injury, like a broken bone or something like that. I don't think any of these guys had that. So um, I would say that they, these are two guys that do kind of get banged up a little bit, but it's not to the point where they're missing significant playing time uh, because they have to rehab off of an injury. Michael Kendricks, of course, did miss, uh, you know, playing time uh, due to uh, the whole host of injuries that he had in 2016. Uh, but I, I, none of those injuries led to having to have surgery or anything like that, you know, um, that would, you know, cause potential long-term sort of damage and stuff like that. So it's kind of a tough sort of decision in this uh, sort of way, which <clears throat> ultimately brings us to the decision. Uh, who wins this analytics battle? And this is actually the first time I'm actually breaking out the age graph. <laughs> 
Um, this is essentially the average total impact uh, score for linebackers that are starters. Uh, and it's basically ranked by 0 to 100, which is you know how much their impact is uh, for starting linebackers at a particular age. And it goes from age 21 to age uh, 39. Uh, so this is essentially the average score impact for linebackers that start at these ages. And as you can clearly see, um, linebacker is one of those positions where you do actually see a steep decline um, maybe not a steep decline, but a relatively lower decline when you reach age 25. You know, you start to, your impact starts to dip a bit uh, from 25 to 26, 27, 28, 29, 31, uh, 32, 33, and then 30, about around 34 years old is when you start to see not 34 but 33 is when you start to see another big decline and then once you hit 36 actually 35 even that's like the end pretty much uh, for most linebackers so this is kind of what I'm going to use to win this battle coming out of college Michael Kendricks had the better profile um, he had uh, you know he had essentially all pro production uh, he had all pro athleticism traits. I mean, he had 90 percentile plus athleticism in every single facet of his skill set. Jordan Hicks had Pro Bowl production and Pro Bowl athleticism traits, which is really good in its own right. So if both of these linebackers were coming out at the same time, Jordan Hicks would actually be the loser. But they're not coming out at the same time. And... I have to realistically go by who's showing good signs of upward trajectory in their NFL career and who is showing signs of kind of a lower trajectory, if you will. And on top of the fact that Jordan Hicks is 25 years old this year, which is technically one of the high stones in terms of average impact, like essentially he's in the prime of his career right now, he's going to be most productive right now Michael Kendricks on the other hand who's entering his uh, 27 year old year as you can clearly see 27 year olds across the board pretty much have less overall impact than 25 year olds um, so this is actually the first time I've actually you know brought out the average total impact for starter craft but I honestly think I have to go with Jordan Hicks here uh, I just have to go with the linebacker that um, you know, firstly, has a good overall profile in his own right, but is also younger and hasn't really shown the signs of decline that Michael Kendricks has shown. You know, if Michael Kendricks uh, continued to have 90 plus percentile impact years um, throughout his entire career, this would be a different story. But because Michael Kendricks hasn't hit the benchmarks, you know, he hasn't produced. I mean, I already showed you guys like D'Amico Ryan's and Lofa Tutupu. Michael Kendricks has not had the career of a Lofa Tutupu uh, in terms of impact. He hasn't had the career of even a D'Amico Ryan's in terms of impact. Jordan Hicks, on the other hand, could have that type of impact. You know, it's very possible because he has Pro Bowl potential based on his athleticism, has Pro Bowl potential in terms of his production, and has not shown the signs of decline that Michael Kendricks has shown. Um, so it's really tough. I mean, the only thing I can really say is is based off of college. I, it would obviously be Michael Kendricks, but because Michael Kendricks is later on in his career, is showing signs of decline based on his production in college, which whether it's injuries or not, um, I just have to go with the guy that at this point is looking like he's about to hit his prime while another guy is starting to get out of his prime. Um, because again, uh, the linebacker, the prime age for linebackers is around right now. I mean, most linebackers are at their most productive, their most spry, if you will, uh, when they're at their youngest, and then they start to gradually decline after that. And they're still productive. I mean, don't get me wrong. It, it's, there's nothing wrong against having a 27-year-old or 31-year-old linebacker. It's just you have to have it you know, it's just that they're usually a little bit less productive, a little bit less productive, you know, a little bit, a little bit less impact until they finally are pretty much done. 
Um, so ultimately, that's why I have to go with Jordan Hicks, uh, and I that's that's just basically my statement. I just think Jordan Hicks is about to enter the prime of his career, while Michael Kendricks, for whatever reason that I don't really have an answer for, uh, is looking like his career is on the wanes a bit. Um, so. Uh, because of that, I have to go with Jordan Hicks. Uh, so again, uh, my name is James Coburn. Uh, you can find my work at draftcoburn.wordpress.com. You can also follow me on Twitter at Geometrics. And if you like this content and you want more content like this, be sure to leave a like and subscribe. Share this video as well with anybody that you know, and I'll talk to you guys in the next video. Peace.